Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Wenjun Li from Iowa State University. I'm very happy to give my talk on electrochemical fixation and upcycling of nitrogen in extreme environments and food deserts for this SF workshop. As we all know, industrial synthesis of ammonia from its elements is the greatest invention in 20 centuries. It is the single most important change affecting the world's population. Its expansion from 1.6 billion people in early 20th century to today's 7.6 billion would not have been possible without the synthesis of ammonia invention. Current ammonia synthesis is based on large scale centralized plants with a production rate of over 150 million tons per year. And it must rise 3% every year to fulfill global food demand. However, ammonia synthesis is under harsh conditions, and it requires molecular hydrogen from natural gas. Ammonia industry consumes 1% of global energy supply, contributing to 1.4 of total uh, carbon dioxide emissions. The centralized ammonia production limits its transportation to some geographically difficult regions. With more and more renewable electricity being generated from wind turbines and solar panels, we're looking for more sustainable ammonia synthesis methods. Nitrogen is reduced by water to produce ammonia through electrochemical process. It can operate under mild conditions, easy to downscale. The electrochemical process can be decoupled from fossil fuels and reduce transportation costs for hydrogen ammonia due to its distributed and flexible nature. Electrochemical nitrogen reduction reaction, also called ENR, has been emerging to a very hot research area. As you can see, uh, the publication numbers shoot in the last three years. Different type of electrochemical cells, for example, H-type half cell, molten salt cell, and MEA-based flow cells have been studied. Although high production rate and high fire efficiency using these cells have been extensively uh, studied and reported, vigorously examining the true nitrogen source was also proposed. Questioning the capability of current ENR technologies, especially for those with low temperature and pressure water electrolytes. Control experiments with identical conditions must be applied to argon, and isotopic 15 nitrogen as a feeding gas, as well as the 14 nitrogen gas. These control experiments must be served throughout the whole study as routine factor checkers. Due partly to the early research stage, the ENR research is often plagued by the unexpected pre presence of reactive nitrogen species. Recent reports, including ours, have identified fixed nitrogen sources such as nitrate, nitrite in commercial electrolytes and electrocatalysts. Research efforts on identifying and eliminating reactive nitrogen species are playing a critical role in helping researchers avoid false positive results and unexpected pitfalls. If we just simply compare the bonding energy, we can see that the nitrogen, nitrogen triple bond has super high energy. It is over 945 kilojoule per mole, much higher than other nitrogen chemical bonds. This also strongly indicates that the direct electrochemical synthesis of ammonia, ENR using water as hydrogen source under low temperature and pressures is very challenging. Other routes must be uh, explored. Here, we share our vision for sustainable nitrogen fixation and upgrading in extreme environments and food desert regions. First, we can use renewable hydrogen generated from water electrolysis powered by renewable electrochemical energy for Heber Bosch reactors to produce ammonia. As we can see, hydrogen generation from water electrolyzers still consumes the most electricity. Indeed, this route has been demonstrated in a Eastern Iowa farm. The carbon neutral ammonia has been produced to power farm tractors. It seems that lithium mediated ammonia synthesis and low energy cost 
Non-thermal plasma are feasible processes for ammonia fixation. Under non-thermal plasma, nitrogen gas is oxidized to nitric or nitrous acids, and the higher chemical state nitrogen species are then reduced back to ammonia. These methods can be powered by renewable electricity and have been confirmed to activate nitrogen gas to ammonia synthesis. However, the costs must be reduced and the process be further optimized. We also envision that NOx can be obtained from agriculture or industrial waste streams and serve as precursors for production of other higher valued nitrogen chemicals such as hydrazine and hydrazine, and even further combine with greenhouse gas carbon dioxide for direct synthesis of valuable carbon nitrogen chemicals distributedly. Finally, I'd like to thank my collaborators from Iowa State, Wichita State University, George Washington University, and funding from RPRE, NSF, and the State of Iowa. I thank NSF again for organizing this important workshop. Thank you.